applying the t-test to individual differences. It's not always appropriate to apply a t-test to averages of two sets. In fact, here's a particular example where that's not appropriate. Consider the case where we're doing an analysis of phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is often screened in newborn infants because it may indicate an inability of the child to metabolize phenylalanine properly. And high levels of phenylalanine can cause da brain damage, uh, among other problems. So we want to be able to screen and pick up any indication of elevated levels. We might have a new method where we'd like to improve upon the old method, maybe something that's faster or cheaper, some ways in an advantage over an old method. But if we're going to test this new method, we want to demonstrate that it is as valid as the old. In other words, that it gives data that is not significantly different from the old. So the question arises, how do we do that? Well, after preliminary trials, we might take blood from an infant and uh, divide it between the two trials. Once again, we don't want to take very much blood from an infant, so taking replicate samples it would not be appropriate. So if we divide it in half so that one method can get an, an, a single analysis and the other method the same analysis on the blood, then the data for the two methods, the first entry, is paired. Then we can go to another infant, take a sample of blood, and likewise do a split of the sample and perform the analysis again. And we do that for several different infants, and we can then generate data to test the idea that these two may be systematically different. Now, it doesn't make sense to average and take a standard deviation and test in that manner. Because look, there's, very, there's a lot of variability from one infant to another. Such a large standard deviation would hide a real trend between the two methods. So instead, we're going to calculate a t from, from this data. And we're going to do an experimental t value to test the individual differences. So what we're going to do is take a difference between en every entry value and then average those differences, and then take the absolute value, divide by the standard deviation of that set, and then multiply by the number of measurements, or the number of entries in this new column. So let's take the new value, new methods value, and subtract the old methods value. So, for example, in the first case, we got minus 11. And it's very important to keep the sign here. So, in the second case, we have a minus 2. And in the third case, we have a minus 12. And then 0. And minus 15. So, we have five entries. And the average of that column is a negative 8. The standard deviation for these differences is 6.595, and n is 5. So t experimental is 8, taking the absolute value, over 6.595 and multiply by the square root of five entries. This works out to be 2.712. Now, before we bring in the t-table to make a comparison, let's decide on what would be an appropriate probability value. Or what level should we test? Well, we don't want to make the threshold so difficult to reach that we would rule out the possibility of a systematic difference at uh, a realistic lower value. In other words, we want to be rather cautious here 
and not introduce a new method where, where there may really be some systematic difference. So let's arbitrarily set it uh, on the low side. We're going to say 80% confidence level here. And how many degrees of freedom are we going to use here? Well, we've got n of 5, so the degrees of freedom is the same as before, n minus 1, and we have 5 minus 1 or 4 degrees of freedom to test here. So let's bring in the student's t-table. We want 80% confidence level, that's the first column on the left, and 4 degrees of freedom, that's this row right here. Our t-value from the table should be one point five three three our experimental value for t turns out to be greater than this so this is t table of the from the table is less than t experimental we conclude then there is at least an eighty percent chance of a systematic difference. There's less than 20% chance that the difference is due to random error. And so we say we want to go back and find out where the errors or biases lie. Probably the most difficult thing about the t-test on individual differences is knowing when to apply it. Here we have a particular example where we're doing the weight percent of water in green coffee beans. Pause the video for a moment and think about which type of t-test should apply here. Well, there should be one obvious clue that these are not paired uh, data sets. This data set contains six measurements this direct method contains only five. They can't be paired data sets. In fact, these are replicate determinations from a single source. The appropriate thing is to apply t-test to the averages. How might we decide whether baking affects the level of niacin in bread? Here's an experiment where five different types of bread are determined for their or niacin level before baking and then again after baking. What type of t-test would be appropriate here? Pause the video before going on. Well, you probably realize that these are paired pieces of data. The French bread has a smaller variation between before and after than there are the variations among the different breads, say, in any one set. It makes no sense to average these. It's much more important to look at the differences. So apply the test to the individual differences. In this case, a swimming pool was tested by measuring the pH at two different places, only one foot above the bottom, at a shallow end and a deep end. Pause the video a moment and think about which type of t-test would apply here. There is nothing paired about this particular data set. These are replicates made of the pH at the deep end, that's a, a different location, a different place, in this case a single different source. The method is the same, but applied at a different position at the other end of the pools. We are applying replicate measurements at two different positions. So use the t-test on the averages. Here we want to determine whether there's a difference in the performance of two labs 
in their ability to measure potassium in bananas. In this case, five different bananas taken from five different countries are divided lengthwise and half is given to lab A, half is given to lab B. What is the appropriate t-test to apply to the results? Pause the video to think about that before going on. There's quite a bit of variation down a column. It makes for a, a large standard deviation that might obscure differences between the two laboratories. So these are definitely paired. There is a single source that is determined by both labs, and that's true for each banana, so that what we're looking at is paired data. Paired between the two laboratories. Apply the t-test to the individual differences.